Uh, the, the next question is uh, takes you in a whole other direction, and um, we'll answer in this order. Um, we'll start with Ms. Godfrey, then uh, Ms. Dalma, uh, Mr. Cabrera, um, Ms. Foster, and then Mr. Dalver. And the question is, given the OCR lawsuit on the bullying of a special ed student, what plans do you have to support special ed students in the district? Let me read that one more time. Given the OCR lawsuit on the bullying of a special ed student, what plans do you have to support special ed students in the district? And I've lost track. Oh, <laughs> and Ms. Foster, we said we would start with you. No, I think, um, which is fine, but I think you said Godfrey. Which one? I'm sorry? That's right. Either one's fine. Who, who starts, Godfrey or Foster? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I jumped a line. There I am. Ms. Godfrey, yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's all right. <laughs> Either way, it's fine. <laughs> I know you'd let me answer eventually. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the OCR lawsuit is something we spent a lot of time talking about. Um, it has taken an emotional toll on our community. Um, we have now um, finally a bullying policy that we can use as a guidepost for how we deal with this sort of a situation. Um, as I mentioned, it was a painful way to get here, and um, I think our district has learned a lot from that process. I think going forward, what's important is that when you have a policy that's in place, that it be very accessible to the folks who need to use it, and that's parents and administrators and teachers, and that it be well understood and it's clear, it has clear timelines, and it has um, a way to rebuild trust with families that when they've got um, an issue with their special ed kids and some bullying, that there's a um, clear path to resolution. I can't imagine anything more heartbreaking than having your special ed kid be part of a um, situation like this. Any kid in a bullying situation is painful, but then have it compounded by not knowing what can be done to help and who can help. So for, in my mind, the way forward on that is to use the resources that we have, the channels that we have for communication, and do some paranet around this is what it is, this is how you access it, this is how we protect these kids, um, and that we do that going forward as a team and as a community to help rebuild the trust. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Dolman. So I think the first thing that I would do to, to build that trust is actually take a couple of steps back from the, um, the board's resolution um, against the OCR and really establish a partnership with OCR uh, and make sure that from here moving forward, we are working to make sure that we are providing a learning environment for all our children. They're all our children, um, both the one that bullied as well as the bullied. We need to make sure that we're providing the best learning environment for both and we're nurturing both. Um, the second thing is um, we need to keep learning. We have a bullying policy. We need to make sure uh, that we understand if it works uh, by, measuring its, by measuring its effectiveness and then making sure that it's applied consistently. That has been the single most important, I think, issue with our school district is this consistency issue. And the third thing is I would really look at other school districts and see what they're doing in terms of their, of their um, bullying policy. But not only that, how can we best serve all students, specifically those that, are, that have special needs, to make sure that they're achieving their full potential. Thank you. Uh, next, Mr. Cabrera. Thank you. I mean, I mean there's, there's no way to address the severity and importance of this issue in a few minutes, and it's just so essential to empower the staff and the, and the community to be able to address this and other future issues, including our bullying policy. Um, I feel like some of the key aspects is transparency, ensuring that everything that the board does is completely transparent and completely open to the public. The public can be involved in the processes, specifically around these types of issues um, and other conflicts uh, that happen. Also, I want to state just in terms of you know working with minorities and, and special ed needs, it's so important to have accessible, like you're talking about, like accessible um, solutions and, and resources. I myself was diagnosed with dyslexia, which is a type of um, uh, edu you know, special education need, and making sure that there's resources for that. And when, you know, 
there's a stigma attached to it in the way that it's approached in the high schools and in the, in the elementary schools. It's very difficult to get started many times. And so trying to you know, reduce that stigma and reduce the issues that come with that so that it can be talked about more open. And I feel like what has happened in our community, well, really the entire country with the anti-bullying movement is an amazing you know, wave that we as a community should, should ride to implement all these policies that are attached to that. Thank you, Ms. Foster. Bullying and discrimination is absolutely unacceptable under any circumstances and has absolutely no place in our schools. Um, it's, it's my belief as a, as, a, as a parent, as an attorney, as, as so many other things, and from 20 years of work in social justice, that we need to ensure that our schools are places where every single student feels safe, feels protected, and can learn. It's absolutely even more tragic when bullying um, takes place against a student with special needs. Um, we now have a bullying policy in place that, as my colleagues have said, needs to be implemented, known widely throughout the district, own, shared, reminded. You know, every student, every parent, every teacher needs to be reminded about that policy. We need to make sure that it works as best as it can. Um, and we need to touch base with the families. We need to reach back to kids who have been bullied and make sure that they still feel safe. I also think it is important to bear in mind that the services that we provide to our special ed students are services that can really aid all of our students and create the environment that is best for the special ed student is often one that creates a more nurturing environment for every student. So we need to listen. We need to make sure that those that special ed parents um, have the whole range of needs that they are interested, that their kids deserve met. Um, and I think that last, it's very important for us to work cooperatively with the Office of Civil Rights, whose role in great part is to provide technical assistance and support to the districts in protecting all kids. Thank you. Mr. Dalber, your comments. Well, the first thing that we should do is to repeal the resolution that the school board passed criticizing the Office for Civil Rights. Um, one of the uh, actions that the uh, uh, resolution authorizes is to engage in legal efforts to overturn the finding that we're talking about that. That is the finding that um, the district violated federal civil rights law in failing to protect the student from uh, bullying and harassment. So we cannot get on the right path on bullying and harassment while we are at the same time engaged in an act of denial around um, the bullying that has actually happened. Um, the board needs to send a clear message to the organization that um, our schools are accountable um, to our kids and to our parents and, and to the law. And that's just the right thing to do. The school board set us on the wrong path with that resolution. The first thing we should do is, and that I would certainly do, is to set us on the right path. Um, second, as I urged at the time, and have many of us have urged since, we need to put into place accountability around how we are dealing with um, incidents of bullying and parent complaints of discrimination and, and harassment. What was clear from the OCR case is that while we had procedures that mandated um, that reporting happen and so forth, those were not actually being implemented and followed uniformly in our schools. And until we get accountability around that at the level of implementation and not just around policy, we're not going to be able to solve the problem. So I would say two things. We need to put ourselves on the right path and we need to put systems in place around accountability. Thank you. 